And now moving on, 12 ambassadors to the United Nations visiting Israel this past week. The trip, organized by Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, in order to illustrate Israel's challenges in the region. The ambassadors of Argentina, Albania, Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, Ecuador, Nauru, Samo Samoa, Palau, South Korea, Uruguay, and Zambia also visited Judea and Samaria and met up with the head of the Benjamin Regional Council, Israel Gantz, who explained the historical connection of the Jewish people to the region. But their timing, unfortunately, was not an easy one, as Israel is still experiencing a rise in terror. And with the new agreement reported between Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, this might not end anytime soon. So joining us to discuss is ILTV reporter Asaf Nisan. Asaf, thanks for joining us. So what was the purpose of this visit of the ambassadors? What we've seen, Idar, is UN ambassador to UN Israel's ambassador to the UN, Gilad Erdan, taking time and pretty much bringing those 12 ambassadors here to Israel to show them the different experiences Israel de deals with, challenges and different meetings like throughout the official, the official visit throughout the time here. They also met up, of course, with Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, also met up in Judea and Samaria with Israel Gans, but mostly to illustrate the different issues and difficulties are here in the country. So this is not a big surprise for us to know that they visited uh, also Judea and Samaria. Now, you mentioned that they met with uh, the Prime Minister. What exactly did they discuss there, and where else did they uh, visit on their trip? From what I saw from the reports and the statement coming out from the PMO, Naftali Bennett met with the, uh, for, with the 12 ambassadors, and Prime Minister Bennett himself also illustrated the importance of those relations. And in addition, of course, to showing those, those challenges, uh, UN Ambassador Gilad Erdan also took him to different sites, including including actually one of the terror, one of the terror tunnels of terror tunnels of Hezbollah up in the north. Now you mentioned the terror tunnels. We mentioned terrorism. It, there's been a rise. We've had several uh, attempts or, or stabbing attacks in Jerusalem this past week. Uh, and we are hearing about a new agreement between Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. What can you tell us about that? Well, Idar, as reported first in the Jerusalem Post, we've seen that Hamas and the, Islamic, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad have actually decided to take action and actually increase cooperation. So interesting enough, it's going to be mainly in the West Bank. I mean, we know the cooperation in Gaza and the coexistence, but we're seeing now in the West Bank a bigger rise in support in terror attacks, in planning, in infrastructure. We've already seen the, uh, the Shin Bet and the IDF working on trying to root out the Hamas terror cell. Now think about the fact that if we have the PIJ joining in, this is going to be a harder operation. And this, of course, happening also with cooperation in the military wings. We're talking about Izzadina and Qassam on the one hand, together with the Al-Quds brigades. This is going to be a really tough time. And this is what we're going to see it's happening in the future now with Israel and the West Bank. So other than sort of upping terrorist attacks against Israel, what else do the two terrorist organizations agree on? They agreed, of course, on the, the cooperation between the military wings. And of course, their purpose, and obviously they're trying to Fight out the, to fight out Fatah, because of course we still have Fatah, which is controlled, which is the controlling party of the PA today. And over as such, we're seeing that they're trying to root out, together with Israel, even by themselves, they're trying to root, to root out the Hamas infrastructure. So if Hamas sees the PA slash Fatah still still terrorizing it, there's no surprise they want to pretty much root them out as fast as possible. Now, now this is not going to be easy, because like I said, those joint those joint forces will now actually come as a bigger terror, terror and harder infrastructure for the PA to handle by themselves. Now, the question would be if Israel will come back now to the table now that the PA is looking to root out those terrorist cells. It's yet to be seen because we know the talks are not on the, the horizon right now and Prime Minister Bennett doesn't want any, any hopes and connections with the PA. So it remains to be seen. And what about Iran? Does it have a hand in any of this? Well, obviously, Iran is the one who backs up both terrorist groups. So this is not a big surprise that seeing both terrorist groups acting unofficially in the will of Iran and promoting the fact that Israel is behind everything and they want to destroy Israel, this is not a surprise for us to see this cooperation. I might, one might even say that there's a hand behind that decision to, to increase cooperation. That would be the hand of Ali Khamenei, the Supreme Leader. All right, Asaf Nisan, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you so much. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. 
Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.